Hi, I'm Greg from ZE Partner, and today's video is to introduce you to ZE Portal. Almost every business needs to receive documents and data from their clients. It might just be KYC documents like proof of address and proof of ID, or perhaps proof of income, design specification documents, or legal agreements. The list is endless. Many businesses have email templates that they send to clients and then manually chase every few days until the documents are received. This can take a lot of time and leaves the door open to a lot of human error. Well, now there is a better solution. I'm here to introduce you to the ZE Portal Client Portal Extension for Zoho CRM. With ZE Portal, any business that uses Zoho CRM and Zoho WorkDrive can automate their data collection and chasing at the click of a button. ZE Portal is designed to be installed and up and running within a matter of minutes with zero technical ability. Let me show you ZE Portal in action. When you first install the ZE Portal Zoho CRM extension, you'll be taken to the settings menu. In here, you'll choose a portal short name. You'll set your website URL, the link to your privacy policy, and the link to your business logo. You'll also be able to choose which date time format you wish to use. Then you'll need to set up some settings for Zoho. Here, you'll choose which data center you're in. You'll authorize the connection. You literally just click this button and then click accept. You can set up a custom work drive folder ID, but we recommend that you leave this blank. You can also add your sales IQ chat widget. And you can connect to Zoho Books. Once this is all done, that's it. The whole system is set up and you can go ahead and start creating portal templates. We have a full tutorial video on how to create portal templates. It's in the card above and within the playlist for ZE Portal. So we'll use an existing template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a contact and I'm going to click Create Portal. Here, I'm going to choose the portal for this person's onboarding portal. And I can see a preview of what they're going to be sent. They're going to be sent our client application form. They're going to be asked for proof of address and proof of ID. So I'm going to click Create Portal. That's how quick it is. The portal is now created, as you can see here. The portal has a number of different items, and they're all currently in the status of requested. We can modify these items, we can cancel them, we can add additional items. Within 10 minutes of the portal being created, the client receives an email inviting them to visit the portal. Here's the email that the client received. As you can see, it's already branded with our logo and our company details, which have been pulled in from Zoho CRM. This template is completely editable by you, or you can leave it as is. Here, the client will click on Open Portal, and then their portal will load. Based on the template we used, this client's portal is asking for their proof of ID and proof of address. So let's go ahead and provide these documents. Now you can see that the proof of ID has been marked as pending review. So let's submit the proof of address as well. Finally, we have the client application form. Before we fill that in, I'll just quickly show you that this person can view their invoices because we've had that set up on our template to show them. And if I had online payments set up with this version of Zoho Books, they'd be able to pay this invoice straight through this link. They can also view their signature requests. Here, they can see that they have one outstanding signature request. They can click this button and they'll receive another reminder email from Zoho Sign. And then they can use that email to log in and sign that document. So let's go ahead and fill in the client application form. Here's the email reminder that they've just received. So the client application form has come in. As you can see, it's preloaded with Susie's name, email address, and mailing address. So here we're gonna set her employment type as employed, and let's change her address to street, and let's mark her as being in London. So 
So now, as you can see, she's being redirected back to her portal. And because she's marked herself as living in London, we've now automatically asked her for her proof of US citizenship. And because she's marked herself as being employed, we've asked her for her three months pay stubs. So let's go ahead and give these documents as well. Finally, let's go ahead and sign this document as Susie. Now you can see that Susie has no more actions required at this time, and all these items are pending review. So let's go ahead and go back into the CRM and let's refresh her record. So firstly, you can see that her address has been updated on her contact. So here we can see that her address is now updated to Street and London, United Kingdom, and her main income type has been updated to employed. If we go back in here and we click on process portal responses, we can see that all of these items are pending review. We can also go to the home screen where I've got this widget set up that shows me all the items that need attention. So firstly, let's go to the application form and process the response. And let's just accept that. Now we've got her pay stubs. So we can go ahead and accept that, accept that. And for this one, let's reject it. And we'll say we can accept May and June, but we have to reject April. Please provide July's pay stub instead. Thank you. Submit. We can accept her US passport. And we can accept her proof of address. Finally, we have her proof of ID. Bear in mind that could have been a driving license or state ID as well. All right, so now if we look at Susie's portal, we can see that it's in the stage of in progress and the system is automatically gonna chase Susie again in one hour's time. Now this is because we may reject multiple items over the space of one hour and we don't want to send her multiple email each time we reject an item. As Susie, let's return to the portal and refresh. Here we can see that the previous response has been rejected, but that this time we only require the April pay slip. So here, let's go ahead and give the April pay stub. And while we're here, I'll show you how we can now download the signed document that we signed a moment ago. So there's the signed document that Susie signed just a moment ago. All right, so now there's nothing left for Susie to do on this portal because she submitted everything to us that we asked her for. So let's close out of Susie's portal and let's go back to our home screen. Now we can see we only have one item that needs review. So let's go in and process that item. Here we can see what the reason we gave last time when we rejected her item was. And we can see that we have previously accepted files for this item. 
So we can click in here and we can go into Susie's work drive and we can see the items that we previously accepted. So let's go back here and accept this final document. While we're in work drive, I'll show you that the third item has now been moved to accepted. And you'll note that all of these items are saved within the correct folder structure. So this portal was created inside Susie's contact folder. And inside the portal, we have a folder for each of the documents we requested. If we go into each of the documents, we can see that we have a rejected folder and an accepted folder. In our accepted folder, we have the three documents we finally accepted. And if we go into the rejected folder, we can see the pay stub that we rejected. Now, if we go back to Susie's portal, we can see here that the portal is complete. We can add an additional item to reactivate the portal. We can modify the portal where we change what's displayed to Susie on the actual portal itself. For example, now that we have all of Susie's documents, we might want to delete all this about the data guidelines. And here we might want to update this to something different. So for example, thank you for providing all of your documents. You are now set up as an ongoing client. We have your information set as follows. And we can pull in data from her contact record update. So now if we go back to Susie's portal and view the portal as Susie, Susie can come back to this portal at any point using the link in the email and she can view the updated information we've put in here and she can see that there's no further action required from her at this time. She can see all of her previously completed actions and she can see her invoices and signature requests. If Susie wants to access her portal without having to go through the special link in the email each time, she can click here to log in or register. She can put her in her email address and click next. Now Susie will receive an email with a code that will verify that this is in fact her email address. This is what the email looks like. She can either use this link or she can copy this code to register. So we're going to use the code. And we're going to set a password. And it ensures that she sets a strong password. There we go. Susie is now logged in. As Susie just has one portal, it'll always take Susie back to this portal when she logs in. However, if she has multiple portals, she'll be able to choose between the various portals so she can see the different documents and data depending on which portal she clicks into. And now, Susie can visit zepartner.net forward slash Acme Accountancy to access her portal at any time. Say you have an ongoing client and at some point in the future, you need something further from them. Well, within any of their records, you can just click add portal item. Here, you can name the item whatever you like, put whatever information you want in here, including pictures, images, buttons, etc., and click add portal item. You can also click to add a similar item if you want to add multiple items. And when you're done, just click close. Now you can see her portal has reactivated. Susie will now receive an email again in one hour's time, informing her that new items have been added and asking her to visit her portal again. So let's visit the portal as Susie. Now we can sign in with our password and click next. Now it takes us back into Susie's portal and it can show us the additional items that have been requested. It's that simple. Finally, I just want to show you the Zoho Sales IQ plugin that is now showing on the portal. 
it wasn't showing earlier on in this video and I realized it was missing. So I've just enabled it quickly so that you can see how this works. So at any point that a client visits their portal, this will pop up and they're able to initiate a call or a chat with you depending on the settings that you've set within Sales IQ. So if you use Sales IQ, this is a very handy add-in to have on here. To find out more about ZE Portal or to start a free trial, visit zeportal.net. Be sure to check out our other videos in our ZE Portal playlist on YouTube. Thank you.